Hi, I'm Mike. The weather shapes our history, no matter where you live. Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or even wildfires. For us in Northeast Wyoming, the weather event that changes our history more than any other, unless Yellowstone blows up and then we really don't have a history, has been blizzards. Over the past hundred or so years, we've seen blizzards change the way we live, the way we ranch, and the way we think on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, and thanks for joining us as we take another look into the past. Over the past few months, we've been setting one video a month aside to do just that. Uh, we've looked at our history here, we've looked at the history of those who have come long before us, as well as the history of the area, but now we're gonna take a little bit of a turn as we not only look at the history, but what caused it to change, and in many ways that people didn't anticipate. Some called it the death of the Wild West, others called it the Great Die-Up, and historians still debate what one had to do with the other, but both certainly had a role to play in completing an era in the Old West. In the late 1800s, the land that is now Wyoming was part of a huge expanse of miles and miles of open terrain. Through much of the late 1870s, the lack of trees on the Great Prairies and open fields of grassland, along with cooler temperatures and mild winters, made raising cattle here easy. Grass and feed was plentiful, but what wasn't plentiful was a knowledge of the area, its weather, and its history. Back then, cattle ranchers didn't store hay for their cattle. The fenceless open range meant that grazing land was easy to come by, and cattle ranchers of the time had huge herds that they would often move across the plains chasing the grass. Into the 1880s, they made it look easy. Railroads moved into the area, towns sprung up, and thousands of settlers moved here to brave the isolation in the hopes of finding adventure and a decent living. In the summer of 1886, the sun scorched the land and the prairies, and the lack of rain that summer was unlike anything settlers had ever seen up until that point. Drought burned through the area. Many ranchers, by fall, were in search of land to graze their cattle on. When snow started to fall in November, the cattle, who had already been starving and ill, found themselves beginning on what may become a cold and hard winter. Starvation began to claim many cattle, but the hard winter turned into tragedy when on January 9, 1887, a blizzard hit, bringing with it 16 inches of snow, howling winds, and temperatures well below minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Cattlemen and farmers had no way to feed their cattle, and those that weren't killed by the cold soon died from continued starvation. Ranchers are recorded as saying that they had no idea how their herds were, let alone where they were. When the spring came and the snow melted away, millions of cattle were counted as dead. The official count called 90% of the area's cattle that were on open range as lost. That spring, people said they could see dead cattle as far as the eye could see. The carcasses clogged up the waterways and contaminated drinking water. And bankruptcy was, for many, the only way out. Others packed up and moved back east, where they said that they knew what to expect from Mother Nature. That winter was known as the Great Die-Up. There was no roundup that year, or at least nothing like what the cowboys of the area were used to. Those that stayed adapted to what they learned were unpredictable weather patterns in the area and made changes to make sure that they wouldn't be caught unprepared again. Ranchers stopped keeping enormous herds of cattle and even began farming operations to grow and harvest food for those that they had. The open range was mostly abandoned. The days of livestock roaming far and wide were over as ranchers began stringing barbed wire and creating smaller grazing territories. The winter of 1886 and 1887 began the end of the wild frontier, but not the end 
of learning from the weather. In 1890, Wyoming became a state, and another blizzard hit in 1912, then again in 1922 and 1927. Forced by weather, ranchers learned to adapt to the cold temperatures. They raised more forage during the summer, and they put hay up for cattle to eat over the winter. Herds even became smaller, as more and more land was needed to produce the winter hay, until ranchers also took on the role of farmer and began seeding grassland with more hardier varieties. Then they figured out to fence off the hay fields to keep the cows out of them, allowing harvest of some of the best grass on the ranch for winter forage. Wet and heavy snow hit in May of 1942 but it did little to prepare ranchers for what was coming for them in 1949. The blizzard of 1949 turned out to be one of the biggest blizzards ever recorded here. Although up in the northeast corner of the state, we only saw a fraction of the weather that the southern part of the state received. Still, even on the outskirts, 15-foot drifts were created, completely isolating ranches, cattle, and people. The blizzard began on January 2nd and was followed by two months of bitter cold and snow. Within hours of the first sign of snow, roads were impassable. Many ranchers, setting out on the usual routine to feed and water their cattle, had no idea what was coming. In driving snow, cattle become disoriented, walking with the storm to keep it at their backs. Many perished from suffocation as dense snow and ice built up around their mouths and noses. They walked without the ability to see in front of them, and they walked off the sides of ravines and into fences where cattle were crushed by the weight of the herd behind them. Within a few days, the sun was shining again, but storms continued to bring more and more snow. Crews dealing with drifting along the roads were unable to keep it up. Locally, a pilot began flying over ranches in the area, dropping handbills with notes telling ranchers that if they needed help to create a big X in their yard, and the next day they'd return with supplies. And if you needed a lift to town with the pilot, they would take you in. Pilots looked for lost herds of cattle and sheep and directed teams to be able to get the feed to them that they so desperately needed. The U.S. Air Force began Operation Haylift on January 28th, flying over 500 tons of hay in from Kansas to Wyoming, sometimes dropping off bales along the way to stranded cattle. Over 20,000 cows were counted as dead after the storm, along with over 100,000 sheep. To add insult to injury, the spring breeding was affected by the storm as well because of the sterility of bulls caused by such cold temperatures and deep snow. Blizzards continued over the next 70 years, almost like clockwork, 1967, 1984, and 1997. Since 97, we haven't seen anything near a major blizzard, but it seems that we may be due. Preparing for the worst is a lesson that ranchers in this area learned well in 1886 and 1887, and it's a lesson that none are soon to forget. We keep our herd close. We utilize fences and pastures along with hay ground to make sure that we have the feed on hand to keep them fed all winter long. And as we get ready to head into calving here on the ranch, the threat of a blizzard hangs over us almost every single day. In these situations, we end up with calves in the house, in the bathtub, and wrapped up on the floor. We keep them in the barn and our main goal becomes to protect every mom and her calf from the weather. Maybe the Wild West isn't gone, but it has adapted. Oscar Wilde said to expect the unexpected shows a thoroughly modern intellect, but I prefer a quote from Thomas Edison where he said opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and look like work. If you can look back on the things that have slowed you down, weather, health issues, coworkers, whatever it may be, but they didn't stop you, they just caused you to adapt and overcome, those are the opportunities to be a better rancher, farmer, or insurance salesman, or just a better person. 
Thanks for coming along today. The weather caused changes here that created better ranchers, better stewards of the land, and we're still evolving all on our own. No blizzard needed to get your point across. Please subscribe. We have much more on the way from the ranch as we invite you to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary every single day. Until next time, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.